What's up guys? Today we're going to talk about the cardiovascular system. Let's start off with some terms you might have heard before in the past. Let's talk about a little pathology. So one disease you might have heard of before is high blood pressure, otherwise known as hypertension. Another one might be a heart murmur. Another one you've definitely heard of is a heart attack or a myocardial infarction. Or how about congestive heart failure? These are four pretty well-known disorders of the cardiovascular system. But before we get there, let's talk about the normal anatomy of the heart. Today, we're going to focus on the blood flow through the heart. I'm going to start by giving you a drawing of the heart. Let's begin. All right, so here we have great drawing of the heart. Let's start with the four chambers of the heart. We're going to start with the right atrium and the right ventricle. The right atrium is right here. And the right ventricle is right here. Now, Let's do the left atrium and the left ventricle. The left atrium is right here, and the left ventricle is right there. So we have the basics down. We have the four chambers of the heart, which are the two atria on top and the two ventricles below it. Now, we're going to discuss how blood flows through this heart, because it's very important. Now, because it's cyclical, there really isn't a starting place. But normally when we discuss this, we talk about the beginning being this chamber here, which was the right atrium. So blood is going to come from the body to the right atrium, through these two vessels. And these two vessels are known as the superior and inferior vena cava. So we'll call that number one. The superior and inferior vena cava will bring blood to the right atrium. So the right atrium will be number two. Now, this right atrium contracts. And where is it going to push that blood? It's going to push that blood into the right ventricle. It has to pass this valve right here. And this valve is known as the tricuspid valve. We pass through this tricuspid valve, which is a one-way valve. It opens up to allow blood to go down but ideally, blood would not be able to go the other way, which is why it's a valve. So that tricuspid valve separates the right atrium from the right ventricle. Now we have entered the right ventricle. The ventricles are more muscular than the atria. If you can see, there's this area here which is representing myocardium, that is heart muscle in Latin. One interesting fact, 
notice that the right ventricle myocardium is thinner than the left ventricle myocardium. That'll be important later. This right ventricle will then contract with that strong myocar myocardium. Where is blood going to go? Well, because this tricuspid valve is one way, blood will not go up that way. It's gonna pass through this valve and enter into this vessel. The valve it's going to pass right here is known as the pulmonary semilunar valve. And as it passes the pulmonary semilunar valve, it will enter the pulmonary trunk. This pulmonary trunk will split into left and right pulmonary arteries. What does pulmonary mean? Pulmonary in Latin is referring to the lungs. So anytime you hear the word pulmonary, I want you to think lungs, like pulmonary embolism, right? That is a blood clot in the lungs. So the pulmonary trunk and pulmonary arteries here are delivering blood to the lungs. Now let's take a step back. Why are we delivering blood to the lungs? Well, what do the lungs do? They breathe in air and a certain percentage of that air has oxygen that we need, right? Because oxygen is what we use to create energy inside of all of our cells. So we are sending blood to the pulmonary arteries, then to the lungs to pick up oxygen. Those lungs through breathing will pick up that oxygen. We also drop off carbon dioxide, which we end up exhaling. But we've picked up oxygen in that blood. And now that blood is oxygenated. It is freshly oxygenated blood. And that oxygen can now be used to deliver to all the tissues of the body. So how do we get that blood back from the lungs to the heart? Because we haven't talked about this entire side of the heart, this entire left side, right? So we need to bring that oxygenated blood back to the heart. And the way we do that is through the pulmonary veins. This right here is the left pulmonary vein. There's also one hidden that you can't see because of these vessels, the right pulmonary vein. The left and right pulmonary vein will deliver blood to this chamber. And what was the name of this chamber? The left atrium. So that left atrium there receives blood freshly oxygenated from the lungs. And it kind of repeats itself. Just like this atrium on this side was sending blood to this ventricle, this left atrium will send the blood to the left ventricle. And it does pass another valve here. This valve is called the mitral or bicuspid valve. From that left atrium, we pass that mitral valve and end up in the left ventricle. That left ventricle is the strongest ventricle in the body. It has the thickest myocardium. And you tell me, why does this left ventricle need to be the strongest? Well, what have we not done yet? We haven't sent blood to the whole body. This left ventricle is responsible for sending blood to the whole body, and therefore it needs the thickest and strongest heart muscle or myocardium. When that left ventricle contracts, it will send blood up through this valve into this large artery that you see on top here. The name of this valve there is called the aortic semilunar valve, and the name of this largest artery in the body is the aorta. Where is that aorta delivering blood to? It is sending it to the entire body. So these 13 steps that you see here are the flow of blood through the heart. 
That's what normally should happen. It should start in this right atrium, go to the right ventricle, pump to the lungs for oxygenation. Once it's fully oxygenated and we've dumped off the carbon dioxide and exhaled that, then the oxygenated blood passes to the left atrium, then to the left ventricle, up to the aorta and to the systemic circuit or the entire body. That is normal anatomy. 